Miami used to be just a vacation spot where people would just come just to hang out for the weekend, maybe have a little bit of a summer home or actually a winter home because nobody wants to be here during the summer and then they would leave. And that's it. Everybody else was in New York and California because that was the place that was happening. But now that's no longer the case. Miami now is a destination. It's a destination, of course, for the fun and the sun. However, it's become a destination for business. And to me, that's really exciting. It's exciting for me because I live here, so I don't have to go anywhere. But also, it might be exciting for you because this might be one of your destinations. It could be a vacation destination. It could be where you consider owning a home. Maybe you want to relocate your offices. Uh, recently, I was reading that the, pay, the, the founder of PayPal uh, just recently bought a house, bought two lots actually in Miami, in Miami Beach in one of the islands for $18 million. Uh, there is the, uh, uh, the founder of Honey, which is that little app that goes that when you go on the, on the web, you can, uh, you can uh, it'll, it'll let you know if there's a deal or there's a coupon. He just bought a, uh, a house, uh, the founder of Shutterstock. And so we're gonna be talking, we're gonna be meeting with one of the top brokers in the area. Where that is gonna, we're gonna be uh, talking about not only the residential side, but the condominium side. One of the amazing things about being here in Miami is just that uh, you, have, you have amazing, amazing uh, sun, water, and just everything else associated with it. So what we're gonna be doing is actually gonna be meeting him at this restaurant, which is considered one of the most famous Cuban restaurants in all of the world, which is Versailles. This is the place where, you know, it's so popular it, because it's so popular because of a couple different things. Um, number one, it's great food, great atmosphere. It's just uh, right there on Calle Ocho, uh, which is one of the uh, one of the uh, historic uh, streets in Miami. But at the same time, it's also uh, significant because when a lot of the politicians uh, come to Miami in order to uh, get to gather the Hispanic vote. Uh, many of them come to Versailles and that's the place they come to uh, have their speeches and establish their position uh, with regards to the Hispanic community. And so we're going to be meeting him there. We're going to be discussing with him really what's happening here in the city and the opportunities. It's just going to be amazing. You're going to just be like, wow, I've got to move to Miami tomorrow. So uh, don't blame me if you decide after watching this episode that you're going to just go ahead and move straight to Miami. If you do, let me know that you're here. So that way maybe you and I could have a, co a cup of coffee at Versailles. All right, so we're here in uh, Miami in a restaurant called Versailles, which is one of the most uh, iconic restaurants in the city. And we're gonna be meeting Ivan, having a uh, cup of coffee. And then from there, gonna go ahead and take a tour of the city. So uh, let's, I think he's right over there too as well. So let's take, uh, let's meet up with him. I'll introduce you guys to him. And we're gonna have a fun time today. Ivan. Chris. Nice to finally get to meet in person. How you doing? <laughs> good, good, everything good, yeah, everything great. Yeah. I wanted to, uh, what I said to them was the fact that Miami is such a hot city right now. Yeah. And Indeed. for so many reasons, and I wanted to, while we're together, is really go over that and really talk about the reasons why Miami is so hot and some of the, you know, not just for beach, not, not just for a vacation spot, but for yeah. all the other reasons, business exactly. and everything else. Oh, it's and maybe they might consider just moving down here permanently. It's changing, it's changing yes. dramatically. And here's some cafecito, man. Where yes. Versailles is, which is, I mean, what more iconic Miami can it be than Cafe wow. Versailles? So well, let's I sit mean, down. We're going to yeah. sit down at one of the, is there a spot that we can sit yeah. down and have this? Yeah. All right. So uh, this is uh, referred to as uh, liquid cocaine, yeah. right? <laughs> this will get you going and yeah, get your morning right. started fast. Which is, uh, I think, I, I always say, I always kid around and say, would you want a little coffee with your sugar? Right, because this is mostly sugar. It's 100% <laughs> yes, right. Exactly, exactly. The, the Cuban, it's a, yes, it's a tradition. Cubans a tradition. have tradition. taught us how to drink this yes. booster to get us going and then become yes. addicted to so, it. Are you gonna drink straight from there or from here? Yeah, this is a little, no, mine is a cortadito. Oh, Yours you did a cortadito. Yours is a cortadito. Oh, got it, got it. So yeah. I drink right from here. Yeah. I have a little bit of milk in that. That's the shot, that's your shot booster. And yeah. and and just, just right now what we're doing the rest of the country is piling I snow. I know. <laughs> I mean, talk about Miami real estate. It's a beautiful, sunny, it's a little bit windy, but it's sunny and we're having coffee outside. And it's really a shame because, I mean, it's, it's just really what Miami's all about. But the rest of the country right now is really yes. battling some snow blizzards. I mean, it's bad. I have two employees who, one lives in El Paso, one lives near Dallas, Texas. And, uh, and 
they have to suffer through power power outages and just a bunch of stuff like you said related yeah. to the winter and i have friends in new jersey and 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 they send me pictures of snow and i send them pictures of palm trees and they hate me for it i know so this is the, yes. the time of the year where everybody hates florida Exactly. For, the, for the right reasons, but then they wind up coming here because yes. it's just a little too much for them to bear well, with. That's them. typically my drink of choice. So, However, what happened is that I already had two cups of coffee. So I'm, I'm going to start with this one. one. Okay, let's start with this. Let's even cheer <laughs> to cheer. Miami. This is there how you, you cheer in Miami. Exactly. Ooh, mm. you're not kidding. Wow, that that's brings strong. back fond memories because yep. I don't drink enough of these. Uh, throughout the week. So do you have a YouTube channel now or no? Yeah, yeah, we okay. are the, the RS team is okay. our YouTube channel where we post a lot of our listings and a lot of the things that we're doing in the this real estate world. Experience. You've been yeah. you've been in the real estate business now for 21 years, right? Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. Going on 22. Actually, I think it's already 22. I, I, I've been in Florida now, South Florida, 40, 40, 41 years. 41 years. Okay. So I've seen South okay. Florida transform and, and, and then real estate 21, I've lived the actual transformation of real estate here. So you started, uh, uh, when did you get your license? So I got my license in 99. Oh, okay, got it. Um, it, it I, you know, the, the, the story is I was working for a large plumbing manufacturer, American Standard, which is a huge global yeah. worldwide toilet, uh, faucets, jacuzzis, in, uh, fact, uh, manufacturer. And I used to call on developers so they could go ahead and specify my product it, into okay. their buildings or their homes. And the developer saw something in me as a salesperson. He oh, saw that I spoke okay. perfect Spanish. And he said, listen, stop trying to sell us. The, the word wasn't yeah. toilets. It yeah. was <laughs> what comes, what goes into the yeah, toilet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, stop trying to sell us that. Why don't you come sell real estate with us? And I got my license and I started selling million dollar condos oh. at a community it called Deering Bay. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Very beautiful. That was one. That was like one of the initial developments yes. in this area. Yes. Right. Yeah. And so I learned oh, yeah. there under some people, people that had been in the industry for a long time. I shadowed them, looked at how they did sales and, and sales is natural. Sales yeah. is like, you know, you just learned the product, but you still got to have you know, the charisma, the drive, a lot of things like that. And then I, I, be, I thank God I've been in now for 21 years and I've transitioned from working with developers in-house in luxury communities to now owning my own team, which is the RS team, right. which is my wife and I, Monica Sarmiento and Ivan Ramirez. So the RS team, right. and then we have people under us and we represent a lot of clients in the general real estate world. Yeah, a couple of interesting things about that is that you started with Daring Bay. So that's a, you know, the product is, you know, there's different uh, grades of real estate, right? Yeah. So the way you sell a, you know, every market is different. So here, the way you sell a $300,000 house is much different than you sell, you know, a million plus, you know, two million property, right? Yeah. Because of the finishes and the type of client and yeah. everything else. So there you've got the education on, you know, on that type of clientele, right? Yes. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, listen, it's two things. To me, it was like, first of all, obviously your product, your product right. knowledge, knowing a $300,000 home versus a million dollar dollar home, right? Um, knowing what exactly, and then knowing your audience, right. you know, your audience, you also got to kind of change. You're appealing to maybe a $300,000 home might be a first time home buyer. Right. So there's a lot of emotions. There's, you know, the financing part, you know, you got to qualify them. So there's a lot of details on selling that type of product. And then the million dollar where it might be a second home or a third home and you're concentrating on the views and the amenities and the services because these are successful people that have made it in life and they want to finally have their dream home right. where they could rest and rest. So, but yeah, as long as you know your product knowledge and you know you know the audience that you're targeting to, then your sales pitch is just catered to them. Catered to yeah, them. But, but I've been very fortunate to do them all. And right now in my portfolio, I have $350,000 townhomes yeah. and I have an $8 million penthouse in Fort right. Lauderdale. In Fort so Lauderdale. so okay. I have a, a, yep. a wide yep. range. Okay. And I do commercial as well, okay. um, which is something that Miami right now is evolving hugely because we've always been seen, seen as a second home destination, more touristy, hospitality. But really the drivers or the, or the business wasn't really coming out of here. And now, you know, unfortunately, we've gone through this pandemic and it has driven a lot of people from New York, from California, from a lot of, you yeah. know, tech industries, finance industries, always had Miami as a second home or a yeah. second place. But working remote made them realize 
that they can now live here and work here and full work time. Here, right. Take advantage of the weather, take advantage of the taxes, take advantage of the city that we've become, which is something else. We never really appealed to them. We just didn't have enough for them to do as New York or Chicago or Boston or California. Now we have everything. We have but, but now that's changed recently because, right? So in other words, like uh, recently, you know, with all the performing arts centers and, and yeah. everything else, uh, there's there's just, I, I, I came here from Connecticut. Okay. So I, I'm from Puerto Rico, went to Connecticut for a few years, years and eventually made my way down here. I got my real estate license in, I think, 19, 90 or something like that a long time ago okay. and i i grew up i don't know if you know uh liberty city martin Luther King. Yes. I, I went to school at edison senior high wow that's where i went okay, to school I went to american senior high school okay yeah, american yeah, yeah. so that where's yeah, american that's right by between the border of carroll city and miami lake and yes Hialeah. okay got it so, yeah, yeah so you right. were, i grew up yeah. uh, so i went to school in edison and i remember you know just going down in little haiti and all the like you couldn't go out there you know over town it was just horrible like you have to. I always get around. this like you could. You have to have running shoes just in case yeah. somebody chases yeah. after you. You could run fast. But then now it's it's I mean, just all built up. You bring that up. South Beach Ocean yeah. Drive yeah. was not what it was. It yeah. was literally a homeless area where it was people that were homeless were were living in those beat up hotels. Yeah. And look at what it is today. Some of the most prime real estate in the world is Ocean Drive and South Beach and South of Fifth. It's it's transition. Yeah. What do you think is the main driver in terms of? Um, is there one thing or a couple of uh, things that you could point to that caused like people that are coming here that were looking at it as a, you know, cause I was telling you about, you know, there's the founder of, of uh, PayPal, yeah. one of the original founders just bought properties here. Uh, the founder of Shutterstock, I mean, billionaires and people with a lot of money are taking and yeah. moving from California here and from New York. Yeah. Um, and do you think how much is that is pandemic and then how much is the other factors so so i i've actually you know i've been very fortunate i'm selling a condo office okay. product in downtown miami yeah that is designed specifically for the creative industry right um and because of that i've really dug into you know trying to get some of these tech companies um coming towards miami I think the driver, first of all, has always been weather. Right. Those successful people like the PayPal person and everything always had a place in Miami to come and hang out right. or have okay. a good time. Um, so they always had it, but they had it as a second home. But they never really wanted to live here full time because in their office, they always had to have their employees and everybody in these main areas right. and have a Manhattan address or have a Silicon right. Valley address. They just were nervous about not having their place of work Got there. It. Okay, that makes sense. I think the pandemic really accelerated the decision of them like, you know what, I'm already going to Miami to vacation or just to get away for the winter. It's got taxes is amazing for them here compared to those cities. Especially California. Yes. A lot of people are fleeing California yes. because of that. And and the pandemic again made them realize that they can operate successfully remotely, oh, right. and the talent pool now is really also something that they were nervous about Miami with this oh, edu right, yeah. education and everything for those type of. And I think our local politicians, our local, you know, government has really made an effort to really increase that and also incentivize some of these companies. So you're right, some of the most successful tech companies, finance, hedge funders. Um, venture capitalists already had a place here yeah. they had already bought now they're bringing I'll give you a perfect example Carl Icahn guy's yeah. huge he had a place in Indian Creek he's been living there forever he had it as a second home then it became his permanent home now he brought his whole company and he has an yeah, office in I Sunny Isles Beach yeah. it's just like so it really now I think what Miami is in for coming to the future the weather was huge taxes now they feel comfortable with the talent pool being able to work remote you know they don't have to all be here and and um and the city itself everything it has to offer hotels the best restaurants the best arts and culture yeah. biggest events ultra um boat shows art basel we have worldwide here, events right? where people Miami's on a spotlight continuously and they all want to be here. I would think that that will also protect us from, let's say that regardless of what happens in the economy or the other housing markets, that that gives us an edge, meaning that, um, you know, because, you know, in California, obviously they're suffering with a lot of different items, right? Including, ta you know, they have high taxes, but a lot of people are saying that the quality of life there has degraded 
So then that means that no matter what happens in the housing market, we're still going to be maybe better off than others because of what we have here. I'll give you a guy from California, uh, one of my clients that I'm representing. He came here and he said, listen, I'm just going to check it out because I hear a lot of buzz about Miami. I want to check it out. So I just want to rent for six months. Okay. And I'm going to kind of get the feel of South Florida. So he kind of stayed in South Beach, then he stayed in Fort Lauderdale, he stayed in Sunny Isles. And then like a month into it, he's like, man, I'm really loving this city. It's just sexier. It's just so pretty. It's just so nice. Yeah. And and then he's like, go ahead, get me a place. So he found a place for six, for six months, two bedroom. Then like a month later, he's like, you know what, Ivan? I am really in love with South Florida. That's interesting. I want a bigger place. I'm like, you just rented a two bedroom. He goes, I want a bigger place. I think I'm here at least for a year, if not two. Three months into this, he's been here three months. He's already looking to buy a home. He's like, I'm I'm making this my permanent, and I'm thinking of transferring my my office over here. And he's in he's in he's from California. He's from California. He's you know Forbes thirty for thirty. You know, he's in the tech ad world. Does extremely well for himself. And he's now like a fan of South Florida. He's like, it's it's beautiful. I used to, you know, I used to live in LA, but you know, Miami's just pretty. It's sexy and everything yeah. else that it has to offer. So, and the for him, you know, he's a billionaire. What he's saving yeah, on money, taxes yeah. alone, yeah. it's a huge benefit for him. What about uh, I want to talk about, and we could put a link in the description of the video, what you're working on in terms of commercial? Because I saw that you had, and yeah. and, and the main question I had is. Because uh, you had you had started with the one in Aventura, was that your first? Yeah, Aventura Park Square. Yeah. Okay. So how is that? So talk about how that that's different than your conventional office space. So yeah. So really, offices are usually um, designed for lease. The developers usually design them, and they just traditional offices right. with your lobby um, and just cubicles, office spaces where people just build them out with their cubicles. Right. Today's office market is catering more towards a millennial, the young generation. Back in the day, our offices were, what were we? We were an office, we were a cubicle, we used like to hide- the office, our... like the show. Yes. Right. Just and like that, you have right. your filing cabinet, you have right. your pictures of your family, you bring your briefcase in, you have your paper shredder. That's done. You're yeah. mobile now. Today's world is like, I just need my laptop and I just, I need to be moving around. Yeah. So office space, and the other thing that office spaces are designed now more is to appeal to that young generation and they're amenitizing the heck out of them. So they're putting, think of Facebook, think of Google, yeah, like think everything, everything you could think of yeah. at the employee's disposal. Yeah. The gym, childcare, restaurants, yeah. um, boxing, you know, all these new right. wellness, uh, you know, initiatives that are out there now, like CrossFit, boxing, Peloton, those kind of things. They want them in the offices, uh, recreation areas where they could just go in a nice garden. Right. To just to just relax, yeah. to relax. Um, big conference room areas where where clients could go ahead. I mean, um, employees could could network and, yeah. and and work together. So you want lounge areas, you want like big open areas. So the offices of today are no longer cubicles. They're big open spaces. They have sofas. Make it look like living room areas where you just park your laptop and you collaborate with your employees. Yeah and you get a big job done together in right. unison. And you have big, long workstations. It's changed, but again, the main thing, amenities. Amenities, amenities, because you want your employees to not just get paid, but they want to have a good atmosphere at work because they want the turnover for employers is so important, you know, to train a new guys. They yeah. want them to feel at home at the place and have everything that they need at the office. You're also gonna attract that's, that's a plus. Like in other words, if the employee, you know, has an option between a couple of different companies and they're really talented, that could swing one, could swing the Listen, toward toward and, the company. And, and that industry, they're competing for talent all the yeah. time. Absolutely. Yeah. So you give them a better work environment, greater place, because it's not just the benefits anymore or the pay. What's the work environment? How yeah. you know? How do we collaborate? How do we grow? Let me see the actual space. Is it you know modern and luxury and ultra with all the amenities? So that's huge. So you started in that uh, at the Aventura Park place was yeah. that, but yeah. now you have another one that is your newest project. Yeah. yeah. And how is that? Are they different? Are they about the yeah, same? Yeah, it's different. Or? Aventura Park Square is a mixed use, so it yeah. still offers amenities in the complex. You know, right. the retail with all the restaurants downstairs, and it has just one office building 
which is the typical with just the lobby and the offices. Right. This one is in the building, everything that I mentioned. It has all the restaurants, it has all the gyms, it has all the, the, um, the social areas, it has the wellness, the sauna, right. uh, steam rooms, massage areas, child, lot, child, lot child care for the employees. Yeah. It has it all in the same building and 70,000 square feet of amenities. So Aventura Park Square was a mixed use Got with it. an office component in it. Yeah, this is more. This is just one building yeah, one all building. integrated. So yeah, that's yeah, that and, and it's designed specifically for it. Okay. And then are these, con are these uh, uh, they're purchased, right? They're condos they are, that you purchase? They are for purchase, yeah, which is not typical. Typically they develop them for lease. Yeah. But this is given opportunities. A lot of people that are saying, you know what? A lot of, a lot of clients from South America, for example, are not used to renting. They like to own their offices. Oh, and so it's common for them to own their office and own that real estate versus leasing. So we kind of are appealing to a lot of South American companies and a lot of South American investors that like to own office space or for the office or for the investor that just says, you know what, I don't want to have, I don't want to invest just in residential. I was going to say, is it an alternative vehicle? It's an alternative vehicle. vehicle. For, okay, got it. Because they say, listen, let me, I own five homes that I rent them out. Yeah. Now let me own two offices and let me just diversify a little bit. So they do that as well. I had a question. What do you think is going to happen to the, um, you know, a, a lot of people are saying that the commercial market, you know, everybody talks about the residential, but nobody's talking about the commercial market and how a lot of these buildings, you know, now post pandemic, yeah. a lot of the employee, a lot of the employers are saying to the employees, well, you don't have to come in. You don't have to come in all the time. And so then now yeah. they don't need as much space. Yeah. Um, I would think that your your type of complex is probably not going to be as affected as these other larger buildings, right? Yeah, very interesting because what we're seeing is a typical employer would think of one employee per every hundred square feet. Right. So um, if they have 10 employees, they need a thousand square feet Got office it. space. That ratio now is probably going to decrease. So when you used to need a thousand square feet for 10 employees, they're saying, you know what? probably half of the time they're gonna be working remote from yeah. home. All I need is 500 to 600 square feet. So yeah. so part of the design of our office that we mentioned, the new yeah. one, is having smaller spaces as well. Not these big 10,000, 5,000 square foot offerings because it might be too big. Right. So, but we make them open, so bullpen areas, so you could fit more people versus more people, cubicles. Right. Yeah. So that's how the office market is transitioning you're designing more now towards today's reality which is you're probably not going to go in five days a week nine to five yeah, and work nine to five, nine to five. Right, nine to you're four. probably going to come in twice or three times a yeah. week for your important meetings your important you know get your work and go back home and so the space now requirement is not as big got it yeah that makes sense that but makes sense. but but what's going to happen is new offices are going to be built because some of the old offices are antiquated and they don't have those amenities. They don't have a lot of that. So they're going to have to be either redesigned or redesigned. Yeah, I was going to say redesigned to accommodate that because now they're going to lose, you know, the more of those that come up, then the, um, yeah. You know, one thing I, I saw one of your videos and, and you mentioned something that then I looked up on the internet and I didn't even know existed. There's a new, uh, just talking about Miami in general, there's a new building that's going to be coming up in Miami that's supposed to be like, looks like something out of a spacecraft. What's oh. that one that's coming up on the bay? Oh, that, that's the, the um, it's in, in Bayfront, right? Is that the one yes. we're talking about? Yeah. yeah. So that's going to be like our iconic signature tallest, you know, think of the Eiffel yeah. Tower. Think of, uh, think of um, you know, that's what we want. It's going to have a it, yeah. restaurant on the top. It's going to have an attraction to go up and have a view. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's going to be built right on the tip of Bayfront, right in front of the marina. And it's just, it's going to be one of the tallest, pe you know, tall. Yeah. It's going to be iconic. It's more of a, a piece that will kind of represents going to be on all the the shows and everything. everybody's going to yeah. want to see it. it's yeah. funny because when i saw that it was just uh, i i saw that and it was just pretty cool the first thing i thought about hey it's pretty cool that they're bu they're building that in my city yeah. yes exactly yeah. Yeah. so now we're going to be looking at uh a property of yours as well uh yeah. today and then yeah. that is uh is a is a condominium right and yeah. it's it's we talked about this i don't know if we we talked about this a little bit about the uh, the condo market, right? Where yeah. now it used to be where people bought condos because they wanted a thousand square foot condo because they're living there, they're moving their mom in or maybe they want to downsize. But now it's like the opposite. People are, are buying condos instead of a house. But yeah. now the condos are like 3,000, 2,500, 3,000, yeah. 4,000 square feet. Yeah, so that, that has been a design trend, the architects and the developers. Yeah. Um, 20 years ago when I started, 
everything was about second home. Yeah. And the season was Thanksgiving yeah. through Easter. Yeah. It was like, it was funny. Even in me and in my sales, it was like, okay, get ready. Season's here. And I used to make the majority of my sales during that season because it was all the snowbirds. Right. And, and it was, so they would design small two bedrooms in a thousand or 1200 square feet or, you know, because it was for snowbirds yeah. or retirees. And it's interesting because back then people used to think, well, Miami, there's really not much except for the weather and the beaches and Disney World. Right. Yeah, and, and I always tell a lot of people this, I say, you know, people used to say, listen, I'm going to go to Miami for 10 days and I would spend seven in Disney and right. three in Miami. Right. Now yeah. it's the opposite. People yeah. spend seven days in Miami and three in Disney. Yeah. Yeah. Meaning yeah. there's so much to do now here in Miami. So our first wave was the Snowbirds and then South America really started, you That's know, true. it yeah. was like we were the gateway to the Americas. And so we were, people were coming because of political reasons or safety reasons out of South America. And we were designing towards those people, but they would come for, you know, three, four months out of the year yeah. and that was it. Uh, then eventually Miami started becoming more and more appealing and then people were looking for it more full time. Yeah. So the architects and the developers saw a need to make bigger homes. And now they're, they're designing them because they're full time. Yeah, they're full -time. There's no such thing as season any, anymore yeah. in real estate for us. It's like we're working the whole year. There might yeah. be little one month or two months that it kind of slows down. but. Now the winter for Argentina and Brazil is our summer, yeah. so they're coming. The the you know now Europe is heavy in it, and now the Northeast. So we get people from all over the world, and so the condos, like you said, are now being designed 2,500, 3,000, 3,500, 4,000 square feet. It's kind of like New York, you know, it's New like York has in the sky. But in like New York, they have the big duplex and the big uh, apartments, you know. But that's because they're in the city; they don't have the option of having a house. So it's kind of like that apartment but just being in miami you know, they're huge they're, yeah. they're huge now yeah. and, and and we're still a lot less expensive than yeah. the real estate in new york or california yeah I mean, the, other, so. the other day i saw one where they you know on the older buildings they're they're buying a couple of them together and then and then combine it, it yeah. happens a lot yeah. they combo two 1500 square foot units and they make them a 3000 square yeah. foot unit yeah. because again they are spending way much more time here or their kids the new generation, their kids now are going to live here and go to school and start working. So we're seeing a lot of people that were successful in their companies overseas, bringing their kids here. They're going to school and they're opening up their own companies or they're running their companies of their fathers from here and they're living here. They love it here. Yeah. So, it's like so uh, the home in the sky, a home in the sky, sky home. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so the architects and developers are now designing because people are much more full time and they need yeah. more space. Makes sense. Makes sense. And yeah. we're here. So it's, we get to enjoy it. We, we get to live in it yeah. and, and help others yeah. as well. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, so hopefully this will convince a whole bunch of people to come in and, and say, hey, maybe I gotta consider Miami. And I'll put your information in the description. But definitely, uh, let's go ahead and, and you, I wanna take a drive. You yeah. got your Jeep? Yeah. I love, uh, I love those. Well, my they're wife fun. Won't, my wife, Miami. My wife won't Miami let me get fun. one. I have to convince her to get one. But uh, I might have to need a third car just to get one of those. Yeah, but yeah. let's I'd love to uh, take a ride and sure. we'll chat some more and then we'll yeah. get a chance to see that property that, yeah, that we we'll, talked about. We'll look at some yeah. nice stuff. We'll look at some nice Miami real estate. Yes, Absolutely. yes.